Okay, our next job is to make the switch rail, okay, that runs from, well it's a switch rail closure rail actually, it runs from our, oh, just let's get down the picture, our wing rail, yeah, right the way down to the tips of our switch rail, or the point, yeah, the point, the tips, the very fine point, okay, and we can do this with one length of rail. Now then, I normally buy these, uh, here you are, okay, uh, I get them from C&L, you can get them from other places, but seeing as I said I would construct a turnout in its entirety, I'm going to make some today with you, okay. Now then, this is one I've already made, a little bit of a practice, I've not made one for years, so I thought I'd have a practice first, and basically on this side that butts up against our turnout rail, I've filed it off flat okay to a tip to a point tapering down and then on the inside okay we're uh, just going to attach to our tie bar okay i've left the bottom web in the little flat bottom web and filed off the bull head rail at the top okay i'll just bring it near the camera you might be able to see that put it down there okay so here i've filed everything off okay and that's the side that goes up against the stock rail, or sort of sorry, the turnout rail. And then on this side, okay, this is the inside piece of the rail. I've just left the bottom web on the little one, yeah, the little flat one. Okay, so that's that side, okay. I also marked it as you saw in red, so I know which side I'm filing. So let's get the rail I'm gonna convert into a switch rail, okay, and I'm gonna place it down making sure I've got the bull head at the top yeah okay and I'm going to mark it on the outside there so I know which side I'm filing and I'm going to take all this side off because that's going to butt up against our stock rail okay so I'll just so I'm going to get ready to file now so how much do we need to file off is the first question well if you look on your template template just here you'll see two words, tips and planing, okay? And that will tell you how much to file off your rail, okay? So if I get my ruler, I just can't put my eyes on it at the minute. Where is he? There he is. I get my ruler and measure that, okay? And that is just short of 40, we'll call it 38. So what I'm gonna do, okay, is mark, on my rail end here at 38 millimetres so I know what to file up to nice big mark ok it doesn't have to be exactly right ok so I'm just going to shift that out of the way so I can bring that more into into view so I've got my line there and I put my red mark in that's where I'm going to take off both the bull head section of the rail and the flat bottom so this is the easy bit now, in order to keep things uh, stable, I'm going to use a clamp to clamp my wood to my bench because I don't want it carrying all, all over the place. And in the same vein, let's clamp that up there. Right, okay, nice and tight. I've also used a, the a self tapping screw and a repair washer and screwed my rail down onto my piece of wood so it's not moving about. Okay, same file again. And I'm going to start taking the material off now. I would suggest that we go across it in the first instance because we want to be taking more off down here than up there because we want to taper it, we want to file right down okay to the rail uh, web itself which separates the top from the bottom. We're going to file right down to the to not touching it at the black mark here. So you want to be looking more down here than you are up there. So going across. Okay. We're using a coarse file because I just want to whip off as much as I can, as quick as I can. Ah! 
How are we doing? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Not far at all now. Just going to file up now. See if I can keep a uniform taper on it. Got me right flat. Just lift it ever so slightly. Not file, just lift it up a touch. Trying to keep the file flat on all sides. Just angle it ever so slightly as if I Almost there. Let me file on it. Right. Deliberate strokes now. Right? Trying to feel the angle. Of the plane in. Okay, with a right, I'm just going to get a little needle file and just clean it up a touch so it's a bit smoother. Okay, so that's that side done. The easy side. Turn the rail over. Okay, I'm going to check which is the bullhead. Okay, and the bullhead is nearest to the camera, and that's the bit I need to take off. So I'm just going to put it under my washer again. And I'm going to mount it a bit further forward, okay, because I can't file this across because I'm only taking out one edge of the web. Of the, well, I'm just taking out the bullet and I want to leave the bottom flat in place. So every file has got a cutting side on the edge, okay, it's got the teeth on it for the file and it's got a smooth side. Okay, so I will want the smooth side facing away from the camera because that's the edge you want to leave in. Now unfortunately, it's just a back and forth on this one. It's quite difficult to do. It's hard to get started. So I've moved my rail in so I can rest the back of my file on my board. Yeah, I'll file a bit of my board away as well, but I'm not too fussed about that. So it's just backwards and forwards. I've not got my mark on this side either. <laughs> The marks on the one side. I put my 38 mil mark back on there. Where are we? 40, 38 mil. Okay. Got my mark. Right, I'll get started. It's getting started that is the most difficult bit. So I'll just rest in my file, take it back. I can only go one way. Yeah, it starts to cut. Once it starts to cut a bit of material off, I can rest the file against the thin bit of the rail that I'm leaving on. I'll have to be careful that I don't file at an angle. We're getting there.
Almost there. If you stray over your cladding mark, don't worry about it. As long as you get a long, nice long even tip, that's the important bit. Almost there. I'm just touching the web with my file now. I've got down to the web that separates the bullhead from the flat bottom. And I just want to file a bit more off so I've got a nice thin tip to my point. Tip to my blade, sorry. Concentrate on the bottom end. That's it. Yep, that'll do me. Like I say, I'll just dress that off with a fine file. Just a bit. A bit rough. I want a needle file with Swiss files on it, as you call them. Smooth it up a bit. Lovely, I'll do it. Okay, we'll probably put a burr on the top, we'll take that off as well while we're at it. Okay. Now I don't know if you can see this in the camera, I'm trying my best to show you. Okay, and there we have it. There we have the point blade made up. I'll just rotate it slowly so you can see what we've done. Okay, and there we are, end on view. Let's try that, I'll pull it back a bit. Just shift my hand. No, I'll put it down on the board, I don't think I'm catching that at all. Okay, so I'll put it on the board there and just rotate it to see if you can see. Okay, so that's what we did. Alright then, so after all that file in, uh, I'm going to have a cup of tea. Okay, so we now have uh, our two switch rails come closure rails filed up there they are and i think we just need to be mindful at this point about how much rail we're using because uh, what you can see in the picture is what we've got are those four half meter pieces that we started with and the situation we have is that if we take the straight one here and put it where the tip of the rail goes and that's marked on our template tips it's about a quarter across this sleeper here okay or three quarters away across it from the uh, common cross common crossing end okay if I just put my finger there okay we don't have enough to make our full turnout rail okay which I like to keep in one piece now then had we used pre-machined point blades okay these are an air switch point blade I'm just unwrapping here okay which gives us uh, a better job than we can ever file up there's no question about that just press that on there about where the point tip should go if you'll stand up please thank you and that one about where the point tip should go there yeah okay then we would have had easy enough rail to make our stock rail in one piece no problem and have a nice big piece of rail left to make our check rails okay and go towards our next project indeed so that's where we are but having filed up the point blades i'm going to use them and so i will need another half meter piece of rail so this project doesn't need four half metre pieces of rail, 
it needs five because I want to keep them continuous. Okay, so moving on then. Right, our next job, we've got a straight rail, okay, uh, one of the uh, switch rails. One of them's straight and one of them's curved, i.e. this one. So all we need to do with the straight one is just put it in position where it is, three quarters away, having the tip three quarters away across that sleeper there. Get our marker pen and mark him. Whoops, it's fallen over. Yes, he's in the right place there, three quarters away across. Just mark him, ready to be cut. Okay, and we'll cut that later. But this one, okay, we've got a job to do on this. We've got to curve it because the switch rail on the turnout side, on the turf for the turnout road, that curves. So what I want to do now is to show you how you curve your rail. Because you can have the chairs keep it in place, okay? Like they do on the real railway, because they just bar it into position. They have some big lads and crowbars, okay? It's all straight rail, barred into position, and the chairs hold it in position, okay? But I prefer that the rail to, to be fixed in its natural position. So it's, it's following the curve already. So I'm going to show you how we do that now. Okay, so we need some magazines. Okay, the Gazette from the O-Gage Guild. If you join the O-Gage Guild, which I recommend if you're doing O-Gage, okay, you get a nice shiny Gazette. That's a magazine, hard paper. And I also get using a private eye because private eye is printed on that uh, cheap rotten newsprint paper that we used to get the bean on and that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. So this is our rail and we want to bend it. Again, I've marked it on in red. That goes up against the stock rail. So I'll need to bend it up this way. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to cut it until I've curved it. Okay, so. What we need is a bottle, yeah, that'll do us, yeah, okay, and some soft paper, and using the bottle, yeah, okay, is that a plastic or glass? Glass. Tell you what, I'll use a bigger bottle. That'll do it. Right, okay. What I want to do is run, press the rail down into the paper, and run the bottle along with it, along it, up and down, up and down. And to start introducing the curve, I just want to, lift it slightly as I roll the bottle into it. You're not going to get all this done in one go. Okay, you need to take it easy, take your time and let the curve start to appear. Okay, it does require a bit of patience. <coughs> Have we got any curve yet? No, we're not got any curve yet. Okay, it does require a bit of patience. Just lift the rail in front of the bottle, just ever so slightly. And let it bring it in. But we don't want any kings. We do not want any kings. Lift in the rail. Make sure we work along its length. Just lift in the rail slightly in front of the bottle. So work it back and forth. Don't want any kinks. I'm taking my time to get a curve in. All along the length. Okay, yeah, and our curve, I think you can see it, it's just starting to come a bit, I'll point towards. Just starting to get our curve starting to come now. Okay, like I say, it's patience. Double check and add it the right way around then. The most common mistake you make is working the wrong side of the rail because you've got it upside down or similar. It's important not to kink it. Take your time and work along the whole length. can buy rolling machines and people buy them who model for rolling up 
boilers for steam engines. Okay, and whatever gauge they model in. And they also have on the rollers a set of grooves that take O gauge and double O gauge rail. And you can bend your track or curve your track using a set of rollers if you want. But which in our case we have not got. Yep, my curve's coming there now. I'm just going to try it and see what it's like against my template. See if we've got enough curvature. Oh, and indeed we have. Almost matches it perfectly. I just might put just a little bit more into it. Just a little bit more. A bit more of that end, I think. What's that like? Let's try that against that template. I'm not unhappy with that. I'm not unhappy at all. Not unhappy at all. So that's how we curve our track. And if uh, you were making a curved turn out and you started with your stop rail on the curve, curved in the main road and curved in the turnout road, your stop rail is going to be curved. That's exactly what you would do. You would curve along the full length of the stop rail and put it in. And rather than using a ruler, you could sight it with your eye down the curve making sure you follow the curve of the template okay and put your stock rail in like that okay so not hard to do you treat the stock rail exactly you would in respect of a straight stock rail but with the curving you'd lay it on the template and get your eye in and make sure you had a nice constant curve as it sweeps around okay so i've got that in place now okay and it's just there and what i can do with this fine fellow yeah. what I can do with this fine fellow is just get one of my clips again and just clip him where he wants to be where it says tips the line here on the template let's bring it further towards the camera the line here on the template that says tips that's where the tips of your points need to tips of your switch rail need to go Okay, which is about three quarters of the way across that sleeper. Just going to grab it there with that little clip and mark him to length here. Okay, just there already. Okay, and then I can cut him to length the same as the straight switch rail which lives in the main road because this one lives in the turnout road. Okay, I'm going to cut him to length then. Right, just as a piece of side, I wanted to show you uh, a method of operating your point switch blades. What we are going to do is solder some uh, brass screws to our switch rails and put them through the false sleeper, as I showed you previously. But, uh, certainly in track construction, and I would say in railway modelling generally, oranges are not the only fruit. What you can do, which is a simpler method, is get a piece of copper clad like this one, okay and scribe down the middle of it okay because what you don't want to do is create a circuit between the stock rail the stock rail and the turnout rail because that will give you a short circuit unless of course you're operating dead rail where you have battery operated locomotives or live steam or whatever it is and what you can do is solder that piece of copper clad directly 
to your switch rails and use it to operate it like that okay so if it's that simple Rick why aren't you going to do it the reason I don't do it is it makes the operation of the switch rails a bit stiffer and because my railway is in the garden I have to use linkages okay to connect the point operation up and because I'm using linkages I want the operation of the switch blades to be as free as possible also not only using it as a sort of a tie bar what they sometimes do is just put it under this side here okay and hide it under the rail at this side so it's only about I don't know 10 mil at best worth of copper clad and then put a plastic tie bar between the two okay so it looks like an actual tie bar so you know like I said I just wanted to show you that because it is a different method now what I would say with this method is the shorter your switch you have okay the more flexibility you have uh, about using this method this very simple method uh, and effective method but the shorter the switch the more effective it is uh, because you the longer your switch rails are the more flexible they are okay I just thought I'd mention that because you might find that interesting Okay, continuing with our method of uh, uh, tie bar substitution, we're going to use a false sleeper. And what we're going to do is drop some 2mm brass screws onto, we're going to solder them onto the switch rails, okay, and we'll drill the plastic sleeper and then we'll just bolt it up from the back and make sure they can't come undone. So we need to mark the place where we're going to attach our 2mm screws to the sleeper where they're going to go through now the tie bar is in this position here I don't know if you can see it on the template you just might be able to this is the position of the tie bar in real life okay where it would be but forward of that is our sleeper position okay well I want it in the center of the sleeper won't make any difference on this gauge okay on modeling so I'm just going to mark my switch rails smack in the middle of that sleeper Got them clipped up at the other end using those little clips and things. Okay, got them clipped up so can't move and they're in the position that I want them, which is three quarters of the way across that sleeper. Okay, so they're marked up now. So I've transferred the marks that we put on the top of our switch rails and I've transferred that to the inside, okay, next to the right angle of the web, the flat bottom, yeah. Because that flat bottom bit that we've still got left in our switch rail, okay, uh, on the inside of it, we're going to file a notch in that, which will take our modified 2mm bolt or set bolt, call it what you want, set screw, yeah, okay. Because what we're going to do is lock the head off the bolt, okay, and then making a slot there, we're going to solder it into the slot. Okay, so to start that off, I'm just going to move my bolts so that I don't rattle them out of the way. Got a net little round needle file, okay, which you'll get if you buy a set of needle files, you'll get various ones in it. And I'm just going to file a slot in that. Use my finger as a guide just to get started. Yeah, I'm in the right place there. Yeah, we're almost there. I'm going to call that one done. Okay, and I'm going to do the other one the same. Get on the mark with your file, use your finger as a guide, just to get started in the right place. Yeah, we start in the right place there, good point. And just file a, a notch into that lower web that we've got left 
on the bottom of our switch rail. Switch rail I should say, not switch blade. Yeah, there we go. So it'll nest in there. Lovely, thank you very much. Right, so that's our two knots. Next job is to saw the heads off our two millimetre bolts, which are here and there. Right, we don't want to put the bolt, the bolt in the vise, okay, because it will ruin the thread. And we don't want that. So what we do there to get around that little problem is we put two nuts on one bolt. Okay and using our pliers like so we tighten them together oops thank you come on tighten up have we got the flats in line no we want the flats in line There we go, that does. Flats are roughly in line. Okay, right. So with that two, two nuts screwed onto one bolt, we can now put the bolt in the vise and saw the head off. Okay, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to film that because it's dead easy. Just put the nuts in the vise and saw it off from the other end. Carrying on, we've made our two little two millimetre bolts or screws, call them what you will, into studs. One here, I've still got the nuts on it, and one here is just the plain stud. Uh, what I didn't mention, I said they were 2mm diameter, I didn't tell you what the length was, they are 10mm length. Okay, so the screws or brass uh, bolts, 10mm uh, long by 2mm wide. Right, next thing I want to do is file a flat about a third of the way, I'm just going to grip it in the pliers, Okay, file a flat about a third of the way along its length at the top. Okay, or the open end here. Not, uh, let's get this right. File a flat a third of the way along its length from the end that you cut the head off, because that's the rough end. Okay, you've got a nice machine thread on the other end. I'm just going to hold this in the vise while I do it. Yeah, okay, and just gently pile of flats about a third of the way along there. Whoops, lost my grip. Let's just get them nice and tight. It's hard to do this and do the camera at the same time. Stay on the camera. Just get started gently. And by firing a flat on it soon comes on, it's only brass, it's soft stuff. By filing this flat, it will help the pivot to snuggle inside the switch rail so it won't hit the wheel flange as our rolling stock goes through the point. So I'm just managing a little angle there, but never mind. Okay, so I've just put a little flat on that one. Okay, just filed it on. I don't, you know, only say I don't know, quarter a third way, the quarter or a third way through its diameter. No need to go to halfway through. Just take off the thread and go to about a third of the way through. Just helps it snuggle in to the rail. Right. Uh, I don't know, I was thinking about trying to file those bolts, hold them in the vise. I think I'm thinking about too much making this video, I don't know. So what I just wanted to do is show you how it should be done, because I made a bit of an aberration of the last one. So all you need to do, fast it in the vise, using the nuts, okay, put the nuts in the vise jaws, tighten it up, okay, and we just get our file, okay, and just whip it across.
I don't know how it's holding the planet. Here we go. About a third of the way through. Okay, that's that. Okay, so we're in action again with our soldering iron. Okay, we're going to solder up uh, the stud into the little groove we made here. Okay, in the bottom web of our switch rail. So make sure that you've got your slot wide enough to accept your little stud that you've made. Okay, with the flat, the flat goes in to the switch rail. What I've done here is I've packed the switch rail up. I've drilled all of my block. <coughs> I have lots of blocks, okay, and I suggest you do the same. Pick them up wherever you can for helping put things together and making little assembly jigs, okay. So I've drilled my block with a little 2 mil hole, put myself a tap on my washer so my rail's clamped in position. And now I can set my stud up so it's nice and square both that way and that way. Okay, and that's why I just put this packer under the rail, this little bit of card, because with the nuts being on the bolt, on the stud I should say, it's making it just not stand square. So I get my eye down, okay, and just check if it's square, yeah. It, it's not dead square, but, you know, it's square enough. We don't want it being at a, a vicious sort of angle. Okay, so while my iron's warming up, I'm going to get my scratch brush again. Okay, if it's not clean, I ain't going to solder it. I'm just going to solder, clean up my rail. As you can see, I can easily move my rail. Okay, I've not got it that tight. I'll just make it a bit tighter. Okay, so I'll just clean up my switch rail and clean just the top portion, okay, of my stud that I've made. Okay, and especially the flat area that I've filed on it. Oops, moved off camera. The flat area that I've found on it. A bit more on me on my brush. Nice and clean, just round the top. I don't want to go down the threads because I'm going to use the oil of the you know, a little bit of oil or something on them when they manufacture them, stamp them out. Okay, and that will stop the, spray, the solder running down. And that's also why I've got the nuts on there. I don't want the solder running down the thread too much. Okay, and also, because of that, I'm not going to be quite so generous with my flux. So position it in. Nice and square. And I've just got the top of the stud uh, just peeping over bottom flange of the rail. Oh, not that right. Yeah, oh, not that in there. Just peeping over. Yeah. Whoops, upset it there. Can't leave things alone. There he is. Just peeping over. Okay, so he's nicely set in there now. You square that way and it's pretty much square the other way. So I can get my flux. Sorry my hands going the way of the picture. Get my flux in. I don't want a load of flux on it, I just want a bit. Just going hold that there because I don't want to put the flux on and disturb it. There's my flux on. Okay. Flux lid back on. There's my eye in. Okay, he's well locked. Yeah, just give him a wipe before I use him. Yeah, okay, and there's my solder. Okay. Just put a a blob. I don't want too much. Put a blob on the soldering iron bits. I'm just gonna hold him down there. Okay, bring me iron in. Nice and gentle. Have the little flat spoon bit of the iron facing down yeah okay so it transfers the solder and there we are okay it's just a little bit wibbly wobbly there actually 
Oui, il m'a tordu. Non. Ya, yeah. ok. Voilà, des ailes. On plug. Ok, did we get him? Let's find out. Wire brush. Yeah, we got him. Wire brush. Okay, yeah, we've got him. He's nice and strong. Okay, so that's what we do. Okay, and you can see he's a uh, reasonably squirt. Okay, in all dimensions. Okay, in all respects, reasonably squirt. Okay, it's not got a, uh, a tilt on it. Yep, pretty squirt. So I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Okay, so that's how we do it. And I'm going to do the next one. And then we'll be uh, moving on from there. So there we have our two finished pieces. Okay, our switch rails. Okay, with our studs soldered on. Okay, just peeping over that bottom rail. Okay, and our nuts on the end there, nice and free, because we've not got any solder down them. Just because we only clean the top of the stud up and we kept the flux in the area that we wanted to solder. Okay, and they're strong enough for us, okay, to operate our, our switch rails. Right, okay, so we'll move on. Okay, so I've just laid our two switch rails that we've soldered the two uh, pivot bolts to, or pivot studs, and what we need to do now is just mark out and denote where there's a rail break here just there on the switch rail for the turnout road and there's one just here on the switch rail for the main road and that is where the switch rail becomes the closure rail okay so as it runs up to the ring rails so what we need to do now is put another cosmetic joint in there because that's the bit which moves if you like okay that's where it pivots from now what i want to do at that point is i'm going to put a cosmetic fish plate in okay and you know to do that we've seen that before but i'm going to saw the rail both top and bottom because it, it makes it a little bit more flexible in the horizontal that way okay and therefore makes the points easier to operate so i'm just going to take a little bit of the strength out the rail so i'm going to saw it top and bottom okay and then i'm going to put a cosmetic flesh plate okay where the, where the saw mark is to denote to denote a rail joint okay so i'm going to get on with that okay oh stop right there what i'm also going to do okay is i'm going to put a ch thread a chair past okay the uh, joint between the switch rail and the closure rail because it should be a slide chair at that position okay it should be a slide chair here okay but i like to put a full chair in to give the rail a bit more support if i was concentrating on making uh, strict prototypically accurate points and what have you uh, then it would be uh, i put a slide rail in there a slide chair in there but i'm not i just want good running okay and something that looks reasonable so i'm going to put a full chair in that position not a slide chair so i'm just going to slide a chair past that position where i'm going to put the fish plates on solder them on and uh, and then uh, as i say i can't get one on from this end can't get on from that end because we've got our pivot bolt there okay So, uh, we've now finished the uh, preparation of our switch rails. Okay, I'll show you this one. Just in detail there, get it in front of the camera. Thank you. Where are we? There it is, yeah. Oh, please focus on it here. Oh, no. So, yeah, well, you can see I put that uh, cosmetic fish plate in and I've sawn the rail top and bottom to make it a little bit more flexible okay when we operate the switch blades okay so i've just weakened it a little bit right then so that's that one done uh, in doing that i've also <coughs> i 
because we're building across as I said I've got my switch rail for my turnout road clipped in place so I've clipped it in at the far end okay uh, at the thruster point where the point tips are and I've also clipped it using one of those little bulldog clips I've clipped it to the wing rail okay in here we'll need to leave a little gap uh, between the wing rail and the switch rail because we don't want to be transmitting electrical current uh, into the uh, crossing uh, because that needs to change polarity this this side of the uh, turnout will always be one polarity and that side will always be the other polarity the uh, frog or the common crossing changes polarity depending on which way the train is going through the turnout so I've clipped it to and just in clipping it to I've made I'm sure I've left a little gap because we're going to use uh, plastic fish plates these things okay to insulate to help insulate and they've got a little pip in the middle okay that we just need to accommodate and that's why we leave that little gap okay so all ready to glue okay I've done everything on the rail that I'm installing I've, you've, we've done all this I've cropped the chairs uh, I've, I've laid it in place, I've, we've put the curve in the rail before and I'm making sure that it's over the top uh, of our template and follows the curve uh, precisely and what I'm going to do now is just glue it in place and you've seen all this before okay so I'll come back to you in a so I've got it glued in I can take the clips off now okay and there it is there's a turnout switch rail glued in oh one thing I did mention before I've mounted it me uh, turn out now just I've mounted it on a board a little bit of 10 mil ply because the studs that we soldered on to the end of the switch rail poke through further than the bottom of the sleepers so what I've done is I've just cut the paper template a hole in it a slot in this area here okay and I've got my board uh, underneath the template there this bit's overhanging, it's in mid-air, it doesn't matter, it'll hold itself up so that I'm not resting on the studs for the switch blades, uh, for the uh, uh, switch rails. Okay, so that's that did there. Uh, next one I'm going to put in now is uh, this one, okay, which is our main switch rail. Okay, and what I'm going to do there is I've put my sleepers on again, I've gapped them, I want to move that little gap again, and I'm going to set it in using our track gauges because then we can ensure that we are absolutely we'll put one on the very joint to make sure the two rails line up nicely thank you Come there. and I'll put another a little bit further down just a few inches okay and so that we've got gauge with our stock rail right the way through our turn he just moved a bit there then he did we'll make sure I've got a gap okay so that's what I'm going to do next use my gauges just glue along and down uh, our uh, switch rail for the main road okay and I'll come back to you in a second when I've done that so just glued that first section in of our uh, switch rail and I'm just going to roll the gauges down now and glue the next section glued about four chairs just roll them down to the next section you might find where you're gluing your chairs where you've put your fish plate in uh, they don't uh, uh, they don't move into the center of the sleeper because the wedge is touching the fish plate there's one or two cures you can get your knife and knock the wedge off the the, the chair or you can just have it uh, slightly to one side on the sleeper I just put them slightly to one side on the sleeper and nobody seems to notice okay so I'll move on and I'll get gluing again so we've got the uh, switch rail for the main road glued in place it's standing in mid-air at this end here a bit because we've not got any slide chairs underneath it because we've not uh, fitted the turnout uh, rail yet but uh, that's okay uh, what I thought I'd do is we'll have a little test to see if uh, what we've made works okay and I've put a bit of track here on this end just connected it up a little bit okay just using our the fish plates that we put on the uh, stock rail so we've got our six wheel 
Storvar here and she's always been a problem child because she's got three axles and the wall in the middle is very wobbly, it's free floating. So if there's a problem with the turnout that middle axle catches it. So we'll just have a little try. Oh successful. Yep, just through nicely. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's the stove our works. And also, it's the, it's the long wheelbase vehicles that will give you the problem, not the short ones. So we have a Stania brake here. Okay, and we'll just try him through. Yes, thank you very much. Goes through nicely. That's what we want. See what I'm saying about that wheel drop as you cross the frog? Makes it bounce a little bit. Okay, so everything going great. So from here on in the video, uh, things should happen a lot quicker because I've taken you through in the first parts, uh, parts one and two, all the detailed stuff, and I've and I think I've been sort of uh, uh, maybe overindulgent in showing you every little thing. Uh, I was in a quandary whether to take some stuff out of the videos because they're almost as long as Ben Hur now. Uh, but I thought, well, no, you've got a fast forward button on your computer or your laptop, whatever you're watching. And if you know, if, if it's no use to you, you could just zoom through it, okay? Because uh, I presume a very low level of skill. Uh, I've tested the video on my wife, the, the, the first parts that I've made, and uh, I'm quite pleased with it because she said, Rick, 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 if I got in your shed and had them tools, I could do what you, you've just done. So I thought I'd took that as an acid test. Yeah, she said, I'm quite confident I could do what you, you just did. So I've left a lot of stuff in, okay, but you can fast forward it. But now where you've done a lot of stuff, the soldering, the fixing the chairs, the gluing, the gauging, things in the video now should really start to move along very quickly. Okay, and uh, we'll move on next bit to fitting our stock rail. So here we are. Uh, I've arrived at uh, the point where I want to fit my stock rail. There it is. I've curved it uh, using the technique I showed you with the uh, the bottle, the jar, sorry, and uh, the uh, couple of magazines. Okay, and put a curve in it so it sits naturally on the curve. I've soldered in, okay, our cosmetic joint at this point where the rail brake is. And I've uh, chewed it up and soldered on the uh, fish plates at either end. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. So space the chairs out, and this time I put them in the right place. I've cropped the chairs where I need to. We're all set it all ready to go. So I'm just going to gauge all the way from here. Okay, I'm making sure I have the right gauge. Put my gauges on. Okay, and that's the one with the flat on it. Thank you. Gauge in there. Whoops, something. Ah. Where's my flat? There it is. Gauge into me. Check rail there. That's got it. Okay, I've moved my rail a touch, that's okay. So I'm going to glue, engage right the way down, okay, bringing me a uh, turnout rail, okay, on the turnout side and bringing that in as I come down and glue it in. No need to uh, show you that on the video because you've done it all before. It's just gluing off the gauge, using the track gauges off the track we've already laid and uh, laying the rail in. Okay, uh, oh that's right, as I'm making this video uh, uh, we're uh, being overcome with the coronavirus epidemic which means that a lot of people have uh, got to isolate themselves and this sort of thing and I couldn't think of a better sort of preoccupation if you uh, needed or wanted to isolate yourself than uh, Getting down, buying the tools, buying the parts, and, uh, and make some track because uh, it, uh, it'll stop you getting bored if you have to isolate. Not that I'd want you to be ill, of course, but uh, if you were taking it as a cautionary measure. Okay, so I'll get gluing on. So here I am now at uh, this end of the turnout down at the uh, point tips end. What I have done is I've rather than have it flying in the air and I'm gluing, I've just put another little bit of. Uh, 10mm ply underneath it so it'll hold down. So I'm just going to glue this down. As you can see I've got 
my track gauges either side of the last two chairs so that it keeps the rail or sort of trains the rail to be parallel in this bit where we've no chairs yet or where we're going to put the slide chairs I should say just going to glue them down thank you very much okay just to finish the gluing counting the 20 in my head and also I noticed that while just letting the glue dry uh, don't, uh, you might see you might not but on this point tip here yeah okay the planing on it is not quite right which is what you get when you file your own point blades there's a gap uh, it's, it's, it's closing against the rail at this point but it opens out down here by about oh, half a mil or so and I'm not too fussed about it but I am going to cure it because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grip this end of this point blade here with my pliers, my long nose pliers and I'm just going to turn it in to get rid of that gap it's only a very slight adjustment and I'm going to do it now with my long nose pliers here we are okay so I just want to just get hold of my point blade bring it in and I'm just going to give it a merish twist what's that like that's better a merish twist that's it that's closing up against it now just a merish twist just slightly out on the angle of plane in which with filing them up yourself uh, that's what you get okay right so that's the stop rail glued down So one of the things I need to do before uh, I put a test vehicle down it is to put the uh, slide chairs in. Okay, uh, just wanted to show you this because what I'm what I can do on this point, the main switch rail gets in the way of your track gauge, but it's not a problem because if you the made the made quite flexible, so don't be frightened of just flexing it out of the way like that. Okay, to let to allow you to get your track gauge in, and then again get your glue. And glue your slide chairs in. Easy peasy, no problem. Whoops. Whoops, that's gone wrong. I'm not going to retrieve it. I'll use another one. Let's get in place. I've cropped the bolt heads off the inside. Not as much success today on this bit fiddler. On the inside of the slide chairs. Ah, he's about there now. Put it down with pressure. Get him in place. That's it. Put it down with pressure. Drench him with glue, as we have in previous times. Get that down there. Okay, and because we've bent our rail, okay, we don't need our check rails to hold it in place. It's sort of staying in position naturally so we're not uh, we don't need to get animated about the rail wandering off position because it's lying in its natural position so I will now just finish off putting these slide chairs in again wherever I can lay a rail to gauge using my track gauges that's what I'll do to ensure we're engaged Okay, I'll turn that off there, finish that up, and then I think then we'll have a little see if the test vehicle will go through the uh, the crossing. So here we have the stove out, okay, a six wheeler with the uh, very wobbly uh, centre axle. Let's have a see if it'll go through the frog on our test. Oh, yeah, okay, she's fine. And yes, thank you very much. Because it's a turnout journey, of course, because it's on a curve, that is the most hazardous one. Just put him down there and let's try the old 20 ton stand here brake man. See if she'll go through on a test. Yep, thank you very much. Lovely. I'm happy with that. 
There we go. So, pass the test. Pass the test. Uh, so, they reckon that they should go through without resorting to the check rails. Okay, okay. Uh, I've had some occasions where I've not been able to get this right and I've had to put the check rails in, but when I put the check rails in, it's ran through okay. Yeah, okay. You've got a little bit of adjustment with your ring rails. You can move them backwards and forwards and also what you can do with your crossing nose if you're having problems is move that backwards and forwards. Sometimes it's set a little bit too far forwards and it trips the wheel up as it comes through the knuckle. So sometimes, you know, you can just move it back a millimetre. I could move it, but I don't want to. Okay, you find if you just get your pliers on at gentle pressure, you don't need to force anything. You can move the V backwards and forwards. So, okay, making great strides now. Okay, it's just a question now of the next job being to put our imitation sleeper come tie bar arrangement in and fit our check rails and strengthen it up and uh, wire it up. Okay, uh, what I've not yet done is uh, put uh, my insulated rail joiners in at this end of my ring rails and at the V end of my frog because I put plastic uh, fish plates in there because of course we want to change the polarity of the frog uh, as the point changes, as the turnout changes. Okay, right, so uh, see you soon.